So far in this course, we've talked about a lot of general data mining and machine learning techniques that you can use in your data science career, but they've all been running on your desktop. And as such, you know, you can only run as much data as a single machine can process using some of these techniques using Python and scikit-learn and whatnot. Now, everyone talks about big data and, you know, odds are you might be working for a company that does in fact have big data to process. Big data meaning that you can't actually control it all. You can't actually wrangle it all on just one system. You need to actually compute it using the resources of an entire cloud, a cluster of computing resources. And that's where Apache Spark comes in. So in this next section, I'm going to set you, get you set up using Apache Spark and show you some examples of actually using Apache Spark to solve some of the same problems that we solved using a single computer in the past in this course. But the first thing we need to do is get Spark set up on your computer. So we're going to walk you through how to do that in the next couple of lectures. It's pretty straightforward stuff, but there are a few gotchas, so don't just skip through these lectures. There are a few things you need to pay special attention to to get Spark running successfully, especially on a Windows system. And again, we're going to be developing these examples just using your own computer, but these same examples can scale, scale up to actually run on a Hadoop cluster later on if you wish. So let's get started. All right, let's get Apache Spark set up on your system so you can actually dive in and start playing around with it. Very powerful tool for managing big data and doing machine learning on large data sets. Now we're going to be running this just on your own desktop for now during this course, but the same programs that we're going to write in this section could be run on an actual Hadoop cluster. So if you take these same scripts that we're writing and running locally on your desktop in Spark standalone mode, you can take those same scripts and actually run them from the master node of an actual Hadoop cluster and then let it scale up to the entire power of a Hadoop cluster and process massive data sets that way. So even though we're going to set things up to run locally on your own computer, keep in mind that these same concepts that we do will scale up to running on a cluster as well. Now getting Spark installed on Windows involves several steps that we'll walk you through here. And I'm just going to assume that you're on Windows because most people take this course at home. We'll talk a little bit about dealing with other operating systems in a moment. But here are the basic steps. So if you're already familiar with you know, installing stuff and dealing with environment variables on your, on your computer, then you can just take this little cheat sheet and go off and do it. But I will walk you through it one step at a time in the upcoming videos. Things you need to do, you need to install first a JDK, that's a Java development kit. So you can just go to uh, Sun's website and down download that and install it if you need to. We need the JDK because even though we're gonna be developing in Python during this course, that gets translated under the hood to Scala code, which is what Spark is developed in natively. And Scala, in turn, runs on top of the Java interpreter. So in order to run Python code, you need a Scala system, which will be installed by default with, as part of Spark. And also, we need Java, Java's interpreter, to actually run that Scala code. So it's like this technology layer cake. Also, obviously, you're going to need Python, but if you've gotten to this point in the course, you already have a Python environment set up. And fortunately, Spark, the Apache website, makes available pre-built versions of Spark that will just run out of the box that are pre-compiled for the latest Hadoop version. So you don't have to build anything. You can just download that to your computer and stick it in the right place and be good to go for the most part. Then we have a few configuration things to take care of. So one thing we want to do is adjust our warning level so we don't get a bunch of warning spam when we run our jobs. And we'll walk through how to do that. Basically, you need to rename one of the properties files and then adjust the error setting within it. And then we need to set up some environment variables to make sure that you can actually run Spark from anywhere, from any path that you might have. So we're going to add a Spark home environment variable pointing to where you installed Spark. And then we will add Spark home slash bin to your system path so that when you run Spark submit or PySpark or whatever Spark command you need, Windows will know where to find it. Finally, on Windows, there's one more thing we need to do. We need to set a Hadoop home variable as well, because it's going to expect to find one little bit of Hadoop, even if you're not using Hadoop on your standalone system. And then we need to install a file called winutils.exe to that path. And we, there's a link to winutils.exe within the uh, resources for this lecture. So you can get that there. So if you want to walk through it in more detail, we can do that. Quick note on installing Spark on other operating systems. So the same steps will basically apply. The main difference is going to be in how you set environment variables on your system in such a way that they will automatically be applied whenever you log in. So that's going to vary from OS to OS. Mac OS does it differently from various flavors of Linux. So you're going to have to be at least a little bit familiar with using a Unix terminal command prompt and how to manipulate your environment to do that. But um, 
you know, most Mac OS or Linux users who are doing development already have those fundamentals under their belt. And of course, you're not going to need winutils.exe if you're not on Windows. So those are the main differences for installing on different OSs. All right, let's get started by actually installing a JDK. So I'll walk you through that real quickly. And then in our next lecture, we'll go through all the other details of getting set up with Spark. So like I mentioned before, Spark runs on top of Scala, which in turn runs on top of the Java environment. So if you don't already have a Java development kit installed on your system, you will need to go get one. And just to walk you through that real quickly, just go to your favorite search engine and uh, search for JDK. It should come up. Just take the most recent one you can find, and that should redirect you to the Oracle website. And you just want to select the version that is appropriate for your system. So on Windows, I'm going to accept the license agreement. And I'm going to look for the Windows X64 version in my example. So I'm running a 64-bit version of Windows. Go ahead and get that. Down it comes, and 187 megabytes later, we should have something we can install. So nothing special here. You know, it's just your standard installer. But that is step one for getting Java for getting Spark installed and up and running on your system. Now in our next lecture, we'll go ahead and talk about the remaining steps, which are installing Spark itself, and then all the associated config files, and also one little extra gotcha in Windows, the winutils.exe file that needs to be installed in a special place. So we are getting there. And this download is also getting there. If you click on that, it should just walk you through a standard installer for the Java SE development kit. So just go ahead and probably okay to just accept all the defaults and let it do its thing. And that's all there is. So let's move on to the next steps. All right, we're on our way to getting Spark set up on your computer. We've got a JDK set up, that's step one. So let's move on to the remaining steps in the next lecture.